Many people wonder how ChatGPT gets answers to their questions if it's not connected to Google. Does it search the answers in its own database? Well not really. As we know ChatGPT doesn't have direct connection to database. Although OpenAI trained it on massive amounts of data about code and information from the internet, including sources like Reddit discussions, to help ChatGPT learn dialogue and attain a human style of responding. So how does it know where to look for answers if we don't give ChatGPT even a link or document that may contain the answer we are looking for? The answer to that is closed book question answering, hmm. Okay, so imagine you're playing a trivia game with your friends and you ask each other questions. But in this game, you can't use Google or any other tools to help you answer the questions. You can only use what you already know. That's what closed book means in this case. People have made models that can play this game too. They can answer questions you ask them, but they can only use what they already know too. This is called closed book question answering. Making these models is hard because they need to know a lot about many different things to answer all the questions you might ask them. So, people have to teach them a lot before they can start answering questions. Recently, people have made really good models that can answer a lot of different questions really well. For example, GPT-3 and BERT. You probably still wondering but where this information is stored. If we are talking about humans, our knowledge as far as I know in our heads. To answer this question we need a basic understanding of how neural networks work. Okay, let's break it down. A neural network is like a computer brain, it's like a super cool computer that thinks like a human. It's used a lot in our everyday life, but you might not even know it's there. It's made up of special parts called artificial neurons, which are kind of like little computer brain cells. These neurons work together to solve problems and make decisions. The more neurons a neural network has, the more complex it is. That's why it's also called a multi-layer perceptron. A neural network has different parts, kind of like a sandwich with different layers. There's the input layer that takes in information from the outside world, the hidden layer where all the calculations happen, and the output layer that gives the final answer. Just like you have to practice and learn to play a sport, a neural network has to be trained before it can solve problems. You give it practice problems and it gets better at solving them. During this practice artificial neurons change its values slowly to generate the answers you want them to produce. In our case the neural network is ChatGPT the language model. This model is really good at understanding and using language, like talking and reading. And before you start using it for a specific job, you let it practice on a lot of text it finds on the internet. Now, it turns out that while it's practicing, the program starts to remember some things and becomes like a little helper with information. And the more it practices, the more it knows. The model has to be big enough to store enough knowledge. The model distributes knowledge in its parameters or neurons in an inexplicable way and may hallucinates realistic looking answers when it is even unsure. That, s why you have to check facts you get from chat GPT. Chat GPT is like a detective tasked with solving a murder case. The detective is presented with evidence, however they don't know who committed the murder and how it happened. But, with enough evidence, the detective can predict with great accuracy who is guilty and how the crime was committed. After consuming data from the internet, ChatGPT discarded the original data and stores neural connections or patterns it has learned from the data. These connections or patterns are like pieces of evidence that ChatGPT analyzes when it attempts to answer your questions. The technology behind ChatGPT which gained widespread popularity in the end of 2022, has been around for a while, but received little attention until ChatGPT became viral. ChatGPT is built using GPT-3, specifically GPT-3.5. The acronym GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3. ChatGPT is built on top of the third generation of the GPT model. But what exactly is GPT? Let's break down the acronyms in a straightforward and non-technical way. The generative aspect of GPT refers to its capacity for producing natural human language text. The 
pre-trained aspect indicates that the model has already undergone training on a specific dataset, similar to reading a book or several books before being tested on what you learned. The transformer refers to the machine learning architecture that underlies GPT. Putting it all together, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer GPT, is a language model that has been trained on data from the internet, with the goal of producing human language text in response to a prompt.